Thank you for checking out Coastal Community Church. We hope that you receive hope and encouragement through this week's message. If this ministry has impacted your life in any way, please share your story at mystory@coastalcommunity.tv. We hope you enjoy the service. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. How are you all doing this morning or this evening? We're excited about a brand new series called Change. We're going to be starting on January 8th. Everybody say January 8th. January 8th. It's going to be amazing. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be at uh, no matter what campus you're at, we're going to be starting the series. It's going to be incredible. We're going to be breaking free from some things maybe we're dealing with in the new year. But I am excited about Christmas. Anybody else excited about Christmas? A couple of you guys. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I, I'm really pumped about today, uh, and, and, and I know this, that uh, today there is something that we all have in common. Now, I know that that's a little bit difficult to imagine since there's so many different people here today, so many different backgrounds, so many different ethnic diversity, so many different income brackets, but we all have one thing in common, and that thing that we all have in common is that we deal with insecurity. Uh, every single one of us out there, including myself, we all deal with insecurity. Like, let me just ask you this question. Is there anything about yourself that if you could, you would change? Raise your hand if, you, if you, there's something about yourself that you would change if you could. And the people that aren't raising their hands, they've already spent a lot of money changing those things. And so... <laughs> Uh, but pretty much all of us would change something about ourselves. Why? Because we all have this insecurity in, in our lives. And, and, and I, I love when I get introduced to people by friends. A lot of times they'll be like, hey, this is my friend Sarah. And I'll be like, man, what are you talking about? I didn't know she doesn't have big ears. Why'd you, why would you say that about her? And they'll be like, what? I didn't say that. Why? Because I uh, produce some insecurity in their life. And so all of us have some insecurity. And what I know about insecurity is if we stay in a place of insecurity long term, we'll either become very, very vocal about it and tell everybody how we are very, very secure in life, or we'll become very, very quiet and and kind of go to the background and will become very passive in life. And I know that this is true because uh, uh, about a month and a half ago, almost two months ago, we were doing a water baptism out at the Pompano Beach Pier, just seeing the life change that was happening in our church. And one of our teenagers walked up to me and said, hey, Pastor TJ, this weekend that message, that message would savage, dude, and just walked off. And I was like, dude, what? what? I, I, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if, if he he meant that my message was terrible. Um, I didn't know if that meant that my message was good. And all of a sudden, I started getting really, really insecure. And so I, I went to this group of teenagers, and I was like, hey, hey, you guys, like, uh, so somebody walked up to me earlier today, and, and they said, hey, Pastor TJ, that message was savage today. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, man, that was savage, dude. And, and I was like, well, well, do you guys want to help me out a little bit? Because I'm getting, I'm getting a little uh, antsy inside because I have no idea what savage is. And I'm like, do, do, does somebody want to tell me what savage means? 
Does anybody actually know what savage means? It's like, okay, all like the 20-somethings know what that means. I actually had to go look it up again because it's either an an act that is really, really cool or or something that is brutal yet awesome. And I was like, oh, I I, I like that. I like that my message was brutal but awesome. Like it just hit you in the face. And so, but it, what I know is that insecurity, when it gets created in our lives, is that long-term insecurity will lead to instability in every single one of us. And you just become somewhat unstable in life. And we, what we need when we're, in, when we're in that place of instability is we need somebody to come and to bring us clarity. And what I love about Christmas is, is that Christmas is the point in time where God brings clarity to every single one of us, where he comes and clears, clarifies everything. And, and I realize that some of you guys, you're here because somebody invited you or somebody tricked you or they've been harassing you for a really long time. Yeah, seriously, they said, man, we're going to a coffee shop and, and you thought you're going to Starbucks. They didn't know that there was coffee at our services. And so like, you're like, man, this, I got duped. But here's what I know is that a lot of us, we have some spiritual insecurity in our lives. And that spiritual insecurity will lead to instability. And a lot of us are unstable and we're not real clear about who God is and what he wants for our lives. And so we have a lot of pushback when it comes to God. And, and this is why I love Christmas because Christmas is a time when God makes it abundantly clear who he is and what he wants for every single one of our lives. I mean, this is the most amazing pe- time of the year. And I've gone through life and I've met people so many times who have told me like, man, I'm just not interested in God. God doesn't want to have anything to do with me and, and I don't really want anything to do with him. And, and anytime I hear that, I, I, I tell people, man, the only reason you feel that way is because you have never seen God. Because when you see God and you see how much he loves you and how great of a plan he has for you, there is no way that you would ever deny him. There's no way that you would ever walk away from him and and there's no way that you could ever say no to the invitation that he's giving to you today. So with that in mind, I want to jump into the Christmas story with you guys today. It's a story that probably many of you are familiar with. It's in Luke chapter 2. We're going to be reading out the NLT and it says this in Luke chapter 2 starting in verse 1. At that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Now, what I love about the Bible and what I love about Luke is that Luke gives us in a historical timeline of what was happening during Jesus' birth. Because a lot of people say, oh man, that's just a made up story. But they can actually date back and look and find out that this was a real point in time. This isn't some made up story. This is an actual factual thing. And you can take that. And it says, and they all returned to their own ancestral time towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of the king of David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from a village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging for them in the end. Now, I know some of you guys, you're like, man, I'm going to zone out right here. I've heard this story. Don't zone out. He goes, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks of sheep. And some of you guys are like, man, I, I know this story. But do you really get this story? This story, think about this. Mary and Joseph have a baby, and they take a newborn baby, and they lay that baby in a manger. In a manger. That's where, that's where animals do animal things. Uh, they, that's where animals eat. That's where animals poo. That's where animals hang out. That place right there is nasty. Like, if somebody were to take a picture of their newborn baby in a manger today and post that junk on Facebook, we'd be calling the the Department of Child Services to get them arrested, wouldn't we? Because you would never put a kid in a manger. Like, that's just gross. It's nasty. 
Not only that, it says the shepherds were, were the first ones to hear. Now, now, we don't really realize this, but shepherds in this day and in this time, they were second-class citizens. I mean, they were, they were the nobodies of the time. In fact, shepherds were, were just thought of as, as kind of the outcasts of society. They were considered ceremonially unclean. They couldn't go and get their, their sins taken care of. They, they, in fact, if they were to call, be called into a court of law to give testimony, their testimony would would be considered invalid in court because they were not worthy to give testimony in court because of their status in society. And you think about that for just a moment. God comes down to announce the Savior of the world, not to a Bible study, not to religious people or people that got it going on. He comes to the lowest of the low to announce the Savior of the world came to the shepherds and it says suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them they were terrified but the angel reassured them don't be afraid he said I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people the Savior yes the Messiah the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David and you will recognize him by the sign you will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, on peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. That story right there, the Christmas story as we know it, is huge in clarifying who God is and what he wants for every single one of our lives. And, and really, today it, it goes back to one of these Four pictures that are up here on the stage. And I know some of y'all are like, why is all that junk on the stage? You're, you're about to find out why all this junk is on the stage. But on, on this stage are three inaccurate views of God and one accurate view. And when we have an inaccurate view of God, it creates a lot of instability in our life. And today, my hope is, is that we can provide some clarity to you. And I hope by the end of our short time here together is that you will have clarity on, on, on at least one of two things. One, how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ um, and, and so you can experience eternal life in heaven. Or two, that you will experience a relationship with Christ here tonight. And so what I want to do is, is I want to walk back to this fence because a lot of people have a picture of God and when they see God, they, they see him as a fence. They see what God is, is God is something that is unattainable. And when we see a fence, we automatically think that whatever is on the other side is, is unattainable. And so, you know, most of us growing up, we learned how to climb fences. Uh, I, most of you can probably still climb a fence and there's nothing better than climbing a fence, especially when it says keep out, like that just makes you want to go in more. But this is what I know is that usually what's on the other side of the fence for most of us is an unattainable thing. It's kind of like you're driving around and you see some high-end exotic car and you go, man, I would love to have that car someday. But you know that that car for you is completely unobtainable. Or, or guys, you see some super hot girl walking by and you're like, dang, that is unattainable hot. Like that is hot beyond my level of game. And so I'm going to have to settle for some lower hot than that because that is just an unattainable level of hot. <laughs> for me, what's unobtainable for me is, is, is abs. Like I've been trying to get abs <laughs> for a long time. Like yeah, like that right there. Like, like seriously. If I had abs like that, there would be no shirt on underneath this jacket. I'd just be like, what's up? Welcome to Coastal. How y'all doing tonight? You see my abs? Jesus gave me these, you know. You can, you can take that down. I'm, I'm getting jealous. I don't want to make anybody stumble here tonight at Christmas Eve. It's unattainable. In fact, you know what, man, I, I, I work out so much. I, I'm like, I love to work out. And I was, a couple months ago, I was working out and I posted on social media, like I just gotten done doing some, a whole bunch of GHD sit-ups at, at CrossFit, because I got to throw CrossFit into a message. And so, uh, like I, I was doing some sit-ups and I posted on social media, man, my abs are killing me. Can't wait for a six pack. And later on that day, somebody walked up to me and go, hey, hey, Pastor TJ, you know what? I, abs aren't made in the gym. They're made in the kitchen. And so the next day I got up and I went into my kitchen and I did some crunches. You know what? I don't have abs still. 
So I, I don't know what they're talking about. I, like, I think they're making that up. It's unobtainable. A lot of us, we see God as, as offense. We see him as, as somebody who, who there, if we could get over, how would we possibly get over to get to him? And if we ever did get over, then all of a sudden what would become unattainable would start to become a hindrance to us being able to do things in life. And we feel like he would hold us back from experiencing some great things in life. And we can joke about this, but the reality is, when you look at God, you see him as a fence. And if you see God as a fence, you're going to naturally feel insecure and unstable when it comes to any sort of conversations about God. Now, God is not a fence, but there is a fence between us and God. And that fence that is between you and I, between us and God, is this thing called sin. And this is what I know about sin and what the Bible tells us about sin is that all have sinned, number one. That means that every single person you've ever encountered, including that person that acts like they got it all going on and they're holier than thou, they're probably the most jacked up because all of us have sinned. And so... Like all of us have sinned in life. And number two is that sin separates you and I from God. And so if all of us have sinned and sin separates us from God, then then is Christmas a, a lesson about how we can get over the fence to God? And I would say no, it's not. Christmas is a lesson about how God came over the fence to get to us. Come on, somebody. God said, man, I'm going to come to you. And God came over the fence to the shepherds and communicated to them, man, like, I will do anything to get to you. And the shepherds, they showed up to find Jesus in a manger, meaning that, like, there is no great of a mess that I'm not willing to jump into and take care of in your life. And a lot of us think that God is wanting to hold us back in life, and that's what we see with God. But the reality is, is God is trying to set you free. And so God is not a fence. Some of us see God as a ladder. And and when I say a ladder, it's, let me explain it like this. Some of us, and and myself included, we all feel like we're better at some things than we really are. Anybody have that where you think you're really good at something only to realize that you're not really very good at it? Anybody ever experienced that? I, I experienced that. I remember when I was 13 years old, my parents put me in a summer camp to play tennis, and they, they needed something to do with me, and so I was playing at this local place called GT Bray in their summer camp, and I started playing tennis, and I started beating all these kids. I never played tennis before in my life. I started beating all these kids. I, I started dominating them. I thought I was amazing. Like, I thought I was the next Andre Agassi of my generation. I got his haircut, didn't get his tennis game, but I, like, man, I just thought I was incredible, and I remember at the end of the summer telling my dad, like, dad, like, I am a tennis prodigy. Like, we need to start getting into some tournaments. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all the way to the ATP tour. And, and, and so there was, a, there was a tennis tournament in Fort Myers where, where we lived at this place called Fiddlesticks. It's the nicest country club in, in Fort Myers at the time. And so my dad entered me into the amateur division of this tennis tournament. And I showed up. I had my Nike uh, shorts on with the spandex underneath because that was the cool thing back in the day. Some of y'all remember that. And got the tie-dye shirt like Andre Agassi. And I was ready to go. I get in my first match and I get beat 6-0, 6-0. Double elimination. I just thought, man, they just got lucky in that one. And so like I showed up to my second match. I did not score a single point in two games. I know it's terrible. I've been in counseling ever since and <laughs> trying to deal with that. And... But in my little world, I was a prodigy. But all of a sudden, I got a picture of reality and realized I'm not very good at this. And what happens in our life is a lot of times we think we're so good at something, we think, man, I can make this happen. 
And so what we do with our relationship with God is not about what God can do for us. It's about what I can do for God. And so we think, man, I'm going to earn my way to heaven. I'm going to climb the ladder of success with God. And so you start off and you go, well, man, I went to Bible study today. I got involved in a connect group today. I, I'm, I'm serving at my church. I, I give. And we start what we start doing is we start saying to ourselves, man, if I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that, then eventually I will achieve. I'm like, I'll make my, I'll earn my way to heaven because that's how I get to God is I'll make my way there. The problem with this kind of thought process though is, is you don't ever know where the top rung is. You're just working your way, working your way, working your way. And, and maybe you've experienced this before. Have you ever experienced a really uh, hypocritical, mean Christian kind of person? Anybody ever experienced them? Yeah, a couple of us. If, like you haven't hung around church much if you haven't experienced one. You, you hang out at church. It doesn't matter what church it is. You're going to find one somewhere. And here's the deal. You want to know why? It's because they think they've climbed one or two or three rungs a little bit higher than you. The problem is, is when we're climbing the ladder, we don't know how much is enough to earn success. And if we continue to try to climb the ladder, it's going to breed a whole bunch of insecurity in our life, which is eventually going to lead to instability. And the Bible tells us that it's not about us climbing the ladder because it says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace that you have been saved. Through your faith, it's not of yourselves, but it's a gift from God. And so if this is a gift from God that, that we can't boast of ourselves, then Christianity is not about us climbing the ladder. Christianity is about how Jesus came down the ladder to meet us right where we are. And if he was willing to come to the shepherds who were the lowest of the low, I guarantee he is willing to come right down to you right now where you are in your place. But some of us out there, man, we are trying to climb this and we're trying to earn our way to heaven. And let me just tell you something today. That is not God. And if you continue to try to do that, it's just going to make you feel insecure about your relationship with him. It's going to provide a whole bunch of instability in your life. Because that is not who God is. Third picture that we have here is a garbage can. And just for illustration purposes i'll show you that there is some some trash in the garbage can everybody see that everybody got that and so a lot of people they think that god is a trash can and uh thing that i know about trash is that trash most of the time is messy it's nasty let me illustrate it like this earlier this week i was at target picking up some things, and I was in the, the, the checkout line, and as I was waiting there in the checkout line, I, I heard a lady behind me sneeze. And, and anytime somebody sneezes, like, I always get a little anxious because I'm like, oh, that's kind of gross. There's one thing about hearing somebody sneeze. There's another thing about feeling somebody sneeze. <laughs> and so this lady sneezed, and it's like, oh, oh, man, what the heck was that? I was like, and like, I, I went to wipe off my neck, and it was like a big old loogie. Uh, I can't make this stuff up. I mean, it was gross. Nasty. Now, can we all agree that's, that's messy? That's, that's nasty. In fact, I would rather be tased than sneeze on. That's what I discovered. Like, I was like, just tase me, knock me out. Here's what I've discovered over the last 17 years of ministry. There's a lot of people that are in here that have got some garbage in their life. And here's what I know about your garbage. Is your garbage creates insecurity, which leads to instability in your life. And there's some people in here today, you have experienced some things that None of us could ever even imagine, none of us could even fathom 
what it's like to be like you and the guilt and the shame that you walk around with. And here's what I know about most of our garbage. Most of our garbage comes from things that we have done, number one, or number two, things that have been done to us. And we think that because of that garbage, that there is no way, there's just no way on this earth that God would want anything to do with us. We just feel like we're a throwaway when it comes to God. But let me just tell you something today. You're wrong. You're wrong. Because Christmas is a story about how Jesus was laid in a manger saying that there is not a situation that is so messy that I won't get right in the middle of. See, the beautiful thing about giving your heart to Jesus is that Jesus actually becomes the garbage can for your trash because this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God who made him who had no sin to be our sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. So in essence, what it says is that God literally comes and it says, hey, all that trash in life that you don't know what to do with that you're carrying around, hey, I want to take all of that for you. And all you have to do is give him your heart, and he says, man, I'll take all of that garbage for you. And so if, if, if God is not a fence, and God is not a ladder, and God is not a trash can, then what is he? But before we get to that, let me just say this. Uh, I love good food. Anybody like good food out there? A couple of us? Like, I love some good food. Like, there is nothing better than a huge pile of meat on my plate. Like, that is good food to me. Like, give me a steak. Give me some prom rib. Give me some ribs. Give me some just food. Like, I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, there is nothing better than going to a Brazilian steakhouse. Just leave it on green. Just leave it on green. Don't give me none of that filler. Ain't nobody wanting filler here. Nobody wants some rolls. Nobody wants a salad bar at a Brazilian steakhouse. Wasting my $50. I want meat. Man, I'm telling you what, you go to a Brazilian steakhouse, you might get saved. You might find Jesus at a Brazilian steakhouse. I'm just telling you that right now. But I love food. Here's what I know is nothing, there's nothing that can ruin a great meal like bad company. Like you can have the best meal in the world, you got bad company, it makes that meal terrible. Some of y'all are getting real nervous right now because you're about to go eat some food with people that you would never eat food with <laughs> if your last name wasn't the same. Come on now. And here's what I know is that in your family, uh, like there is always that weird guy, that crazy guy. And some of y'all are like, well, there's not a weird guy or crazy guy in my family. Merry Christmas. <laughs> just saying, just saying nothing. Bad company will ruin a good meal. So I love a really great meal with really great friends. And you, you know it's a really great meal with really great friends. When you hang out for two, three hours, you just talk and you just eat. And then at the end of the night, they just don't all leave, but they all help you clean up before they leave. Those are good friends. Everybody, everybody say amen right there. Like those are the friends you want. And the reason I, I say that is because it, it is going to kind of lead me to this next point and what God wants for you. Because Jesus says in Revelation he says this, here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. Jesus says that he is standing at the door. And so, so God is not a fence. God is not a ladder. God is not a trash can. God says, man, I stand at the door and I knock. And, it, and he goes on to say, if anyone... From saint to shepherd, hears my voice and opens the door. 
So it is, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he says, I'll come in. And he says, I don't want to come in and, and won't look around and go, man, this place is a mess. I cannot believe what you've done with this place. I mean, you need to paint the walls. You need to change the carpet. You need to remodel the kitchen because I am ashamed of the state of your house. That's not what it says. It says, here I am in the door and I stand and I knock. If anyone opens the door, says, I will come in and eat with them, and they with me. What Jesus says is, he says, ma'am, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And I'm not here to change your game. I'm not here to mess up your life. I want to sit down with you. And I want to eat with you. And I remember the day that I answered the door to Jesus knocking. July 18th, 1998. Jesus came in and he, he sat down and he talked with me. And he challenged me. And he loved me. And he corrected me. And he guided me to an incredible life following him. Today what I know is that is that God is here. And more than anything, he wants you to know who he is and what he wants for your life. And He isn't somebody that's unattainable or somebody you have to perform for or somebody you got to get your life all right for before you can find him. In fact, you don't have to find him at all because he's right there looking for you. And so the question for all of us today is this. Will you open the door to Jesus today? Will you let him in to your life? Because the Christmas story is about the fact that God came over the fence and God came down the ladder and God became the trash can and came looking for you, came looking for me. And today he's knocking. The question is, will you answer? Thank you for checking out Coastal Community Church. We hope that you receive hope and encouragement through this week's message. If this ministry has impacted your life in any way, please share your story at mystory@coastalcommunity.tv. We hope you enjoy the service.